In this video, we're gonna take this photo and we are gonna turn it into this photo. Uh, we're gonna use a little bit of Lightroom, raw photo straight out of the camera, no changes. We'll start off in Lightroom. Uh, there's lots of masking work involved in this one because of all the differing um, degrees of highlights and shadows in this. So lots of masking work and then we'll jump over into Photoshop, finish it off with a little bit of uh, distraction removal. Uh, this is more of my, my photo makeover series of videos where I just walk you through start to finish. All right, it's not necessarily teaching you every feature. I'm just talking about what I'm thinking about as I'm fixing something. Um, and it's more of just the start to finish workflow. So all that said, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, I'm in the develop module in Lightroom. You could just as easily do this in Adobe Camera Raw, same exact features, everything would work the same. Um, game plan for this, you know, too bright sky, too dark of a foreground, but some bright areas in the foreground too. So that's the foreground is probably gonna be one of the harder parts. I can head over here to basic. Of course, I would do any cropping uh, as well first. So uh, there's just a little sliver of something on the left-hand side, but um, you know, at this point, I'm gonna crop creatively. I'm gonna crop for whatever I think whatever I think looks good on the photo. I don't have an output size uh, for this yet. And if I was just gonna share it online, then I would just simply um, crop it for whatever, um, crop it for whatever size for that or leave it as is. And if I was gonna print it, I would have to crop it to whatever print size I wanted. So after that point, um, I've got the creative crop done. I can't really do too many global changes here because if I make the whole photo darker for the sky, everything gets too dark. If I pull down just the highlights, I start pulling down the highlights on the boats. It's just, it'd be hard to do anything global at this point. So what I could do is just do some of my technical changes. Uh, if you're gonna do noise reduction and sharpening, which on most landscape photos, I, I wouldn't have to do, but uh, you could do that in the detail panel here. I usually skip the, I usually skip the technical changes in my creative edits just uh, for sake of time, but feel free to do those in your workflow at whatever point you want, it just doesn't matter. I would come here and do a little bit of lens corrections because there's a little bit of dark fringing on the side. You can remove chromatic aberrations, not much of a, an impact, but not gonna hurt anything if you do. And then we do have a little bit of, a little bit of perspective issue, not much, but I would use my, uh, my guided up right here. I can click on the guided section, drag one line down on something that should be straight on the right hand side and drag one line down on something that should be straight over here on the left-hand side. So something right along those lines. That's about it for that. Uh, last thing would really be the biggest thing, which is we're gonna come up to our masking tool because now we've got to start working on making, making this balance. Uh, so what I'll do first is we'll work on the sky. I'll do select sky. It's gonna put a mask or a selection around the sky. I can make it darker with exposure and really pull in some of those dark or bright spots with my highlights adjustment here, okay? So that'll take care of that. I can turn it off and then back on and you can see it. My only concern is in making it darker, which I don't necessarily know I made the whole thing too dark, but in making it darker, it's also making the clouds, the darker clouds too dark in my opinion. Okay, I like the way the bright stuff, everything else looks there. But to me, these clouds, these darker clouds are starting to get a little too shadowy here. So what I can do is I can go to my little mask option here, go to the sky, click on the pop-out menu, and I can intersect it with a luminance range. So what will that do? Well, let me click on it, and then I'll just go select the luminance range in the middle. When I intersect, I'm saying, create an adjustment, create a, create a final adjustment for this mask option up here that will only apply where my sky and my luminance intersect with each other. We're basically saying where the bright stuff and the sky, the whole select sky intersect with each other. Now, it didn't do such a great job of selecting the right luminance, but I can always step in here and intervene with it. So your one X little section over here is just how, what luminance range are you gonna select? So I'm gonna open that up a little bit. And then here's your little feather setting over here. This is a fall off. And this will really help me change that fall off so that you can see if I take it all the way, I'm bringing, I'm basically, if I do this, I haven't done much of a luminance selection. But if I bring the fall off in and not too far, cause I get lines, I can get the best of both worlds of 
pulling away some of the adjustment from the dark areas, keeping it just restricted to the bright areas. If you hover over the mask, you can see what it's doing. And if you hover over either one of these sky and luminance selections, you can see what they're doing. And you can turn them off and on. That's a good way to learn too. But here, turn it off. You can see that's what it looked like before. That's what it looked like after. For me personally, I like it where the clouds aren't quite as dark in the darker spots, but where I get that darkening effect in some of these brighter spots, okay? So again, intersect is a really uh, useful feature for that. And uh, if you want to check the description or just look up in the little cards that pop up in the top right corner of your video, I'll make sure I link to a video I did on that. Now we got to work on the foreground. So let's hit create new mask and I'm going to do select sky. And then I'm going to go up here to the top right corner and just choose invert so that it works on the foreground instead. Now we need to make that brighter, open up my shadows, exposure. All right. Whenever I make a dark area bright, I always follow it up with a little bit of temperature increase because that will help warm it. Okay. Whenever you make dark shadowy areas bright, they tend to look very, very cold. So I'm going to warm that up a little bit there. Okay. Something right about there, I think looks good. You don't need to make it too bright, but brighter than it was. Now I've got one problem, which is in making that whole area brighter, I've got my, this bright area in the water, the, the reflection. I can't use intersect on it because intersect is then going to pull away. If I just want to work on the water, it's going to pull away everything I did on the boats and all the, you know, the, the dock and everything here. So what I'm going to do is create a new mask that is a luminance range selection. Okay. It's not going to intersect with anything. And then I just click and drag across. So it selects that area. It's going to select too much of the photo. You can see with the red overlay here, it's selected a lot of the sky as well. I only want it to work down here at the bottom. So what we do is we hit subtract and I'm going to subtract it. You could use a brush. I use a linear gradient in this case, because it was nice and easy to just click and drag right across the middle there and just remove or subtract the masking effect from the top of the photo. So now I'm just working on the bottom. Now I can reduce the exposure. Now I can reduce the highlights and I have a whole separate adjustment for it. I can go back to my luminance range by clicking on it and I can also adjust the fall off and the actual luminance range of what it's selecting here just to help it blend in a little bit. What you're looking for is to make sure you just don't have any lines uh, across anything there. Okay. So it's a small adjustment, but look, I mean, I'm able to really target that specific part of the photo just like that. Okay. Looking pretty good here. Uh, we've done honestly, most of what we can do inside of Lightroom. I might finish this off down here at the bottom with a little bit of a vignette just to darken in some of those edges. They're already dark because I think the clouds are darker at the edges. So there's a natural vignette here. So I don't have to go, you don't have to go too crazy with it, but just a little bit, I think still helps funnel your attention in. Now we need to do some distraction removal, wires, telephone poles. We can't do that in Lightroom. So we're going to go photo edit in and we'll jump over to Photoshop. As we're jumping over into Photoshop, very quick word from our sponsor, which is always me. Uh, I've got a course, if you like what you see here, I've got a course called The Art of Editing Landscapes. It's kind of a late beginner intermediate style course. So it's not a, a total introduction to Photoshop. I expect you know layers and how to do some basic things there, but it's really a, a great guide for editing landscapes. I talk about uh, all the different things around making selections, how to really attack certain parts of a photo, because as you can see here with a landscape photo, there's a lot of different shadows and highlights and there's different ways we can work with those. So how to do channel based selections, uh, light color atmosphere, how to add all of that to a photo, how to remove distractions, uh, the best ways to do a black and white photo and just some fine art techniques thrown in there as well. So if you want to learn more about editing your landscapes, course is on sale now. So you can swing over to the website and find out a little bit more. Okay. Let's get back over here. Now that we're in Photoshop, um, one of the things that we'll, we'll work through a couple of different ways to do this. So I'll do commander control plus to zoom in. Um, healing brush is a really good one, especially for skies and telephone wires and things along those lines, because what the healing brush lets us do is hold down the option or alt key to sample and then move your brush over and then paint. Okay. And that could work 
but you're gonna definitely see some issues here. All right, now I also have the healing brush set to replace mode. I'll very quickly tell you why I had it set to replace mode. It's because if I were to go and try to get close to the edge here, see how nice it lets me bring right up to the edge of that telephone pole and even down if I wanted to work my way down to the tree line. But it lets me really do that without blurring the photo. If I keep it on normal, which is actually a preferred way to do, to remove a wire like this, again, we'll sample and then we'll come down here and we'll just paint along. That gives me, I think, a much more natural blend between here and not all the way, but close. That gives me a much more natural blend, but the problem is, is that as I get up close to an edge, it starts to blur that edge. You can see it starting to create this little blurred area over there. So it's a combination of both. Uh, it's a combination of me using normal and some big open areas in here. Let's go over here and do this because I think this will, will work pretty good over here. Sample, paint, paint, and then change it to replace, sample, paint. And I don't need to really worry. I don't think I need to worry too much about going through the whole tree with it. I don't think anybody would see that. I'd probably come out the other side and get rid of it there. And if you want to be very, very painstakingly accurate about it, you could go through there and try to get rid of it in some of those places there. Okay. But pretty easy to get rid of the wires. Now, where to me the challenge is, is this wire goes across the sky and the sky changes quite a bit where that happens. So that's when I call in for reinforcements and I grab the lasso tool and I'm going to make a lasso selection around this area. And I only do sections at a time. I'm not going to try to do the whole, the whole uh, pole as well. So I make a lasso area of that selection. Come up here to the edit menu, go down to content aware fill. And you can use the green and the plus and the minus to change anything. But to me, it did a really good job right off the bat. So I just took care of the wire without me really having intervene and do anything other than make a selection. So it's it's a little bit of a, a balancing act, right? It's, you know, healing brush can work great in some circumstances. Uh, content of where fill can work really good. So experiment between the two. What I would do here is I would use the healing brush in normal mode and I would probably try to get rid of as much of this wire as I can all right because what's going to happen I'll explain this in a second option or alt to sample and then paint but as I'm painting along here you can see when I get to an edge I'll sample right along that transition line and then just move my cursor in the middle and then that way I can work up or down but my whole point in doing this is that by getting myself by giving Photoshop less to worry about, getting rid of some of these wires, all right? What I'm able to do now is I can go make a lasso selection of this entire pole, okay? And I can go to content or fill and it should get rid of it right away. It does a really good job of it, okay? So I'll just click okay, I'm done. Whereas if I left some of those wires, now Photoshop's a little bit more confused and it's just, you know, you'll, you'll get unpredictable results when you start to go that route. So that's why I try to do this in sections. I try to give Photoshop as much help as possible when it's removing some of these things by doing them in small sections. And then that way, especially when you go to use content aware fill, it's just got less to contend with. You know, it, it's, it's a little bit more accurate in its results because there's a not a lot going on around it. So rather than one big selection to get rid of anything, uh, I try to do it in smaller pieces. I'm not gonna go through the rest of the photo I'd probably get rid of the rest of the wires there, but you get the idea for this. The only thing left is we go file, save. That will save our copy of the photo. Uh, we don't have to change the name or location. We can close it here. And then when we come back over into Lightroom, and just because we're not working on the raw photo anymore doesn't mean we can't do things to it inside of Lightroom if we think about it at the end. Uh, so in this case, uh, some quick color adjustments I could go to. I like to use color grading, especially with all the warm colors that we have here. Rather than just blast saturation at the photo, I want to take advantage of some of those warm colors. And I could go to color grading and use some of the midtones and even some of the shadows and just add a little bit more warm red yellowy type colors to the photo there because it was such a brilliant sunrise and just to bring out some of those colors it's a subtle change but when i turn it off 
I turn it back on, you can see it does give the, the photo an overall nice finishing touch, especially with some of those colors that we have there. So I can show you here, let's go to the our before photo here and we can see that is what we started with. That was our before. And then finally here is our after. I mentioned a little bit before about that intersect feature and that I have a free video on that. So that's a really good place to go next because it's a, it's a different tool. And as always with the masking tools, there's a lot of different ways to get things done, but it's important to know what intersect does. Uh, and if you're looking to learn a little bit more about it, you should check out that video next.